Hi there, I'm Chris and I quickly want to show you how you can take screenshots of videos and allow your end users to save them as images all in JavaScript and HTML. So what I've done here is I have an HTML5 video that I can play. And every time I hit the pause button of that video, it takes a screenshot of what's currently happening in the video and creates this canvas from it. So it puts the name of the video there, it puts the timestamp there, and when I click this canvas, I can actually store it as an HTML image. So I save that and I can save the image as, as a PNG onto my hard drive if I wanted to. I can then start scrubbing through the video and find other really cool photos, like this one is pretty cool. Click on that and as you see it updates the timestamp and it updates every time I pause the video. When I just play the video it does not update the preview just when I hit the pause button. And then I can store the image again in my HTML page. So how is that done? There's actually no magic in there. I start with some CSS to make it as beautiful as it is right now. Now you also know why I'm not a designer, but it does the job for now. What gets interesting is here the video element. Whoops, the video element actually allows me to put video inside the page. The controls attribute means I get all these controls, the scrubber here and the audio and all these things. These are all keyboard accessible. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to write them myself. Great. I then put an MP4 video in there for Safari and I put a WebM video in there for uh, Chrome, Firefox and Opera. So that supports all the new browsers that actually support this kind of technology. While the MP4 will also support Internet Explorer, but I can't test for that right now. I then have an empty canvas in there, which doesn't do anything without JavaScript, but we put it in there. And I've got a footer where I prove that I've actually written that and I put a UL in there inside an element with the ID save that will store later on all the images that I collect while I'm clicking through the video. And this is when the JavaScript starts. I get the video element and I get the name of the video element by reading out the first source element and getting the source attribute that and replacing all the things that I don't want to have, which is anything that might be before a slash and everything that is after a uh, full stop. So actually that gets rid of the .mp4 in this case and just gives me the name of the video. I get the canvas, I get the UL where I want to store my images and I get the context, the 2D context of the canvas. This gives me the full API of the, can, uh, of the canvas to play with. The video API automatically comes through this query selector video here. And then I have a few event listeners to play, to play, uh, to play with. So the first one I'm doing here is loaded metadata. This means the video has been loaded and I can read its dimensions. I need the dimensions as I wanted to resize the uh, canvas here according to what the video is. The video might be 16 by 9, might be 4 by 3, and this one is 2 by 1, which is rather uncommon, but that's the way it came into, uh, into my inbox. So why not? I just calculate the, the dimensions and have the canvas the right way then. How I'm doing that, I just read the video width and the video height and create a ratio from it. I define the width of the canvas as 400. Then I calculate the height of the, uh, of the canvas according to this ratio. I define some more variables I'm using later on. This is just for cleaning and uh, writing clean code and telling you where the variables are. And then I resize the canvas to the width and the height necessary. So I add a 40 to the height here. This is necessary so I can actually get this bar up here. Otherwise, I would have to write the meet the cups name and the timestamp on top of the video, which might make it unreadable and actually is not nice because it actually interferes with the video itself. So I'm just adding a bit of uh, space there. I then have another event listener called time update. This one fires every time the video actually has a time change while it's playing but I don't want to update all the time. So if the time update fires, this updates. So I would have just have a copy of that video into that canvas. To make sure I only get a screenshot, I add also test if the paused attribute of the video has been set. This means that the video has to be paused before I'm doing that. So it will not update while the video is playing, but when I hit the pause button. While the pause button is actually hit and it's not playing, I can scrub around because both conditions are actually given. The time has changed and the video is still paused. It's not playing at the moment. That's why it's updating here. I then uh, clean the slate of the, uh, of the canvas. I set the background color to, uh, to black and I fill it up. Otherwise, this bar here 
Otherwise this bar here would just be white and this would not be readable. So I had to fill it with some color and black is always nice. And then I call the draw image function. The draw image function gets a video, at, uh, a video object and gets the current frame automatically for me. I don't have to do anything else. So that one gets the current frame from the video and I plot an image from the current frame onto zero and 40 with the dimensions of width and height, which is the ratio resizing that I've done before. So the image actually gets plotted in here and gets resized to the ratio that I wanted to have up front. That's why it's actually calling it here and that my meet the cups and stuff is still possible without being overwritten. I set the font to 20 pixels Calibri. I set the, color, uh, the font color to lime and I do a fill text function which actually puts the text inside the canvas. I set it at 5 and 20 because 5 is from the left hand side here and 20 is from the uh, from the top and the text out of the box is actually bottom aligned that's why I had to put 20 rather than 0 that threw me a bit earlier but it's easy to find out why that happens I then format the current time current time is an attribute that gives me the current time of the video that is in milliseconds and seconds so I don't want to put milliseconds there so I format it to a more human readable uh, format here in this format function. All it does is rounds up to seconds, minutes and hours and puts like colons in between and these kind of things. I then set the color of the text with the fill style to white and I align it to the right hand side of the uh, of the canvas. I do that by um, actually subtracting the width of the text from 395 not 400 so I've got a bit of padding on the right hand side and I get the width of the current text with the measure text function and time in this case is the string that came from format and at 20 pixels from the top so it's actually on the same height as the name of the video and that's all I had to do to actually create that uh, create that that image and label it onto the canvas I then store the images by putting another event handler on the canvas itself, which is a click handler. And every time that fires, I create a new LI element, I create a new image element, I append the image to the LI, and I append the LI to the save, which in this case is the UL inside the element with the ID save, because I actually stored it up here with the query selector. And then it gets interesting, because what I'm doing here is canvas to data URL. What that one does, it takes all the pixels from the canvas and turns it into a data URL, which then be, can be stored as an image. So I set the header of image PNG, and when you look at the, uh, at the images that are saved in the page and you do a image info on them, you see that's exactly what happened. So this one here is all the data of these pixels in that canvas encoded in base64 with a data image PNG header uh, in front of it. So automatically the browser does the packing and all these things for me. And that's more or less everything that is to it. The source code is not much. It's not that hard to understand if you read up a bit on canvas. And it's just amazing that you can do all these things just completely client side these days. So the demo of that is available on isithackday.com slash videograbber and the source code will be available on github.com code poet videograbber. Have fun.